Today, we will be doing a graphing guide review. This is task list item A5, Enter Data and Update Graphs. This training program is based on the RBT task list and is designed to meet the 40-hour training requirement for RBT certification. The program is offered independent of the BACB. The purpose of today's video is to provide a step-by-step -step video task analysis of how to input data and create a graph from that data on Excel. This video will show screen recordings of each step being completed while also giving vocal instructions of each step. This will be a good resource for anyone to use when needing to create a graph on Excel. Once you have Excel open, you will begin by clicking on the A1 spot. Here you will enter date. In the B1 spot, you'll enter session. And in the C1 spot, you'll enter data. And last, in the D1 spot, you'll enter phase line. Although you won't be including the date into your graph, it is always useful to keep track of and input data on that information in case it becomes a variable that is affecting your intervention. For example, a client may miss several weeks, and if you're only graphing sessions, it may not explain why a student is not progressing or why, the, why a student may have a sudden regression. When you begin an inter any intervention, you will begin with baseline data. For practice, we're going to pretend that we've conducted three days of baseline da data on the skill of imitation. For our data, we will be recording percent correct. On the Excel sheet under session, enter one in the first spot, two in the spot below that, and three in the spot below that. In the data column, you're going to enter zero for session one, 10 for session two, and three for session three. What would this would look like on our data sheet is the first session our client got 0% of the imitative targets correct. On session two, they got 10% of the targets correct. And on session three, they also got 10% of the imitative targets correct. With baseline, you should continue taking baseline data until the data stabilizes. What this means is that there should be low variability and usually a stable trend line. If you're inter intervening on problem behavior, an increasing trend line should also be intervened on. And with skill acquisition, a trend line that is not increasing at, a, at an acceptable level can also be intervened on. Since our client has a stable baseline, an intervention will now be implemented to increase the skill. In order to do this, we'll put a half number in the session so that a phase line will appear between the two numbers instead of ha having a large space between them. Under session, type 3.5, and for the phase line, enter zero. By entering zero, this will put the phase line starting at the x-axis and then we'll format it later to go to the top of the graph. Now we will continue entering our client's data for this procedure. Data should be entered and graphs should be updated on a regular basis so that you can make database decisions for treatment. For session four, the client got 50% correct. For session five, the client got 90% correct. For session six, the client got 90% correct. These changes are made if a client gets 90% or greater for two sessions in a row, or 80% or greater for three sessions in a row. So here we put a half number for six and a half, and a zero for the phase line. 
Continuing, session seven, the client got 60% correct. Session eight, the client got 60% correct. Session nine, the client got 80% correct. Session 10, the client got 90% correct. And session 11, the client got 80% correct. This meets phase change criteria again, so we'll put in that half number. So for session, so we put in session 11.5 and the phase line is zero. Session 12, the student got 60% correct. Session 13, the client got 80% correct. In session 14, the client got 90% correct. In session 15, the client got 90% correct. Again, this meets phase change criteria, so we'll put in our last half number. Enter 15.5, and again, put zero in the phase line column. On your homework sheet, fill in the following question. What is the phase of an intervention where behavior is measured in the absence of the intervention? I'll give you some time to get this question filled in. The answer to the previous question is baseline. This is when we measure behavior without intervening on it. This is used to assess the response and to determine whether an intervention is necessary. On your homework sheet, fill in the answer baseline. I'll give you some time to get that answer filled in. Now that we have all of our data in, we'll now be inserting a graph. First, what you do is you'll take your mouse and drag it over the data, starting with session, all the way to our last zero under phase line to highlight everything that we want in our graph. Next, we're, next, we're gonna click on insert and scroll over to insert scatter XY or bubble chart, and then click on scatter with straight lines and markers. Now, looking more in depth just at the graph, we're gonna be removing some unnecessary components for visual appeal. First, click on the vertical grid lines, and it's gonna highlight all of those grid lines. On your keyboard, you can hit delete and they'll disappear. You're gonna do the same thing for the horizontal grid lines. Finally, you're gonna click on the legend where it says data and phase line, and again, hit delete on your keyboard. Now that our graph is looking better, we're going to get our phase lo change lines edited. Click on the orange dot where the phase change line is and make sure all of the orange dots are highlighted when you click on it. Next, scroll to the top left corner and click on add chart element, scroll down to error bars, and then scroll over to more error bar options. A sidebar labeled format error bars is going to appear and make sure it says vertical error bars. You're going to change it to plus and change the end style to no cap. Finally, you're going to change the fixed value to 100. This is going to make it so that the phase change line goes from zero, which is what we typed in our data, all the way up to the 100%, which is the fixed value that we typed in just now. Now that we've got our phase change lines, we're gonna fix the format matting on them. First, by clicking on the horizontal error bar lines, it will highlight all of them, and you can click delete on your keyboard to get rid of those. Then clicking on the orange marker, 
you're going to get rid of those as well. So you'll click on the orange circle, and then on the right side under Format Error Bar Options, click on the paint can, and then click on Marker, and under Marker Options, you'll change this to None. This will erase all of the orange circles. Now, go back to your graph and click on one of the phase lines and make sure they're all highlighted. Change the dash type to the fourth option and change the width to 1.5. Now we've got dashed lines representing phase changes. The next thing that we're going to do is format the axes. First, we want the y-axis to be at a minimum of 100. So what you'll do is you'll click on the numbers beside the y-axis. Then click on the three bars to bring up the formatting options. Under bounds, change the maximum to 100. Then scroll down to tick marks and change major to outside. We're going to do the same thing to the x-axis, so click on the numbers and then change major under units to 1. If you have a lot of data, you can change this to 2 so it won't be as tightly together. And then again, you're scrolling down to tick marks and changing the major type to outside. Now that our axes are formatted appropriately, Question, what does the dash line represent? I'll give you some time to get this question filled in on your homework sheet. The answer to the previous question is a phase change line. This is showing that there is a change in the intervention. This could be a change in the independent variable, the phase, the targets that are being ran, etc. On your homework sheet, fill in the answer, a phase change line. I'll give you some time to get that answer filled in. The next thing that we will be doing is adding axes labels. First, click on your graph so you're not clicked on any other element. Then click on Add Chart Element. We've already got a chart title, so scroll next to the axes titles and add a primary horizontal and also a primary vertical. We're going to be changing the primary horizontal title to session. Then click on the y-axis label and change this to percent correct. Depending on the type of data that you are collecting, you may have on the x-axis the days, times, sessions, etc. And on the y-axis, you could have anything from frequency, duration, rate, or any other type of response dimension. Next, we will be changing the chart title so that it is representative of the graph. What you're going to do is click on the chart title that is above the graph and change it to the procedure name. Here, we are changing it to imitation. When presenting graphs, it's important that they are readable and that all important aspects stand out. A good graph can be easily understood. To do this, we will be increasing the font size of these important elements. 
I'm first enlarging the graph so that it won't look disproportionate when the font size is increased. So first, click on the chart title, Imitation, and increase the font size to at least 36. Then, increase the axes labels. So click on Percent Correct and change the font size to at least 24. And again, click on Session and also increase the font size to at least 24 point font. We'll also be increasing the numbers on the X and Y axes so that they're very visible. So all you do is click on the numbers on the Y and X axis and increase the font size to 11. Next, we will be changing the line and marker color to black. If you have different variables on your graph, it would be appropriate to have different colors as well as a legend to indicate what those colors represent. However, since we only have one variable, we will be keeping the graph simple with black font. Click on the line and make sure it highlights all lines in the graph. Then click on the paint can under Format Data Series and under the line change the color to black. Now click on Marker, click on Fill and change the color to black. Then scroll down to Border and change that color to black as well. If you happen to have a data point that you want to differentiate from the rest, you can double click on that data point and change the fill and border to a different color to show that that data point differs in some way. For example, a client may have been sick, which caused the session to be cut short, leading to you only getting to run eight trials instead of 10 trials. If you still wanted to report that data, you can just change the color of a single data point. Question, when should you include a legend? I'll give you some time to get this question filled in on your homework sheet. The answer to the previous question is, if you're graphing multiple variables. For example, if you're graphing the percentage of intervals that a client spends crying and flopping, these are two different dependent variables. Also, if you're using an alternating treatments design between two different interventions, the two different interventions would need to be graphed with different colors, and we need a legend to indicate the two different interventions. The answer to the, pre to the question was if you were graphing multiple variables. I'll give you some time to get that answer filled in on your homework. Now we are going to enter more data and watch as the graph inputs the data itself. Under 15.5, type session 16. And we'll say that the client got 50% correct. For session 17, the client got 70% correct. Session 18, the client got 100% correct. In session 19, the client again got 100% correct. This, however, doesn't automatically appear on our graph. So what we need to do is click anywhere on the graph and it'll show, the highlighted, show up highlighted what data is in the graph. If you drag down the bottom corner of the highlighted section, it will then include that data into your graph. As you continue to add data, you can continue dragging down the highlighted section to then include it 
in your graph. The final thing we're going to do is insert a text box so that we can label the different phases. First, click on Insert at the top, and then scroll over to Text. Then click on Text Box. You're going to want this just above your data, but also below your chart title. Our first section here is Baseline. And then you can just hit the spacebar a few times until it lines up with the next phase. And you can type the label for that phase. So here we have phase one, phase two, and just continue repeating this for the remainder of the phases. Again, depending on what you're graphing, you can label the type of intervention you are using so if you're doing a reversal design, you can identify baseline and intervention phases. Uh, you can also identify probe phases, generalization probes, anything that is included in your graph and needs a label. Here we have the final look of our graph. This graph has all of the essential components. We've got axes titles, a chart title, phase labels, X and Y axes, data points, and phase change lines. This concludes today's PowerPoint on task list item A5.